Joe Andruzzi is being wired by the FBI. He's a 20-year-old accounting student at LaSalle University, and he's in trouble. He's been betting on football through a mafia bookmaker. He was winning at first, but his luck turned sour. He owes the mob $1,000. It's a debt he cannot pay. You understand? I don't think you do, so. I don't think you got it at all. I think you understand what's going on here. In way over his head and afraid for his life, Andruzzi contacted the FBI and asked for help. Get money, kid. South Philly is a tough place. Not the kind of place where you want to cross the mob. La Cosa Nostra, the Italian syndicate of organized crime families, runs a profitable and bloody business there. Gambling, loan sharking, and extortion rackets. For years, South Philly was run by Angelo Bruno, known as the Gentle Don because of his dislike of violence. He took over the city in the 1950s. He was brutally murdered in 1980. The man suspected of being behind the hit was Nicodemo Scarfo. Nicky Scarfo took over Bruno's empire. He was a cold-hearted killer who ruled the city by violence. But now Nicky Scarfo is in jail. The FBI wants to find out who is running the Philadelphia mob while the boss is behind bars. Andruzzi's problem with the loan shark gives the FBI the perfect opportunity to collect new information on the organization. The college student meets with the bookmaker. He plays his part perfectly and is introduced to Salvatore Sparaccio, a known member of the Philadelphia Mafia. I don't have money. You don't have the money. FBI Special Agent Jim Marr was the case agent on this investigation. Salvatore Sparaccio didn't make any overt threats, but the implied threat, I'm the boss of the family, you gotta pay. I want $120 a week for 10 weeks. The boss offers a repayment plan. Although the mob is charging little more interest than a credit card company, the penalty for defaulting on the loan has a far higher price. Nicky, hey, take some cake off to your wife. Hey, thanks, Bob. Right. For the next 10 weeks, the FBI gives Andruzzi the money to make his payments. And each time he takes the money to the bookmaker, the FBI records the conversation building their case against Salvatore Sparaccio. Each payment is evidence of, of the crime, of racketeering. But the FBI is not interested in making low-level gambling arrests. How are we going, huh? They have a much bigger target. I'm sure it's all there. The ultimate goal is to destroy the Philadelphia Cosa Nostra family as a crime problem. Nicky, okay? Hey, Boogie, you know too much. The tactics we use are to attack the hierarchy. The, 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 structure, the, the structure is the, is the target, and we, we attack the target through, through the hierarchy. They need more information. So on Christmas Day, when they know it will be closed, the FBI breaks into the bakery shop. We proved to the judge that gambling activity and loan sharking activity was taking place in an Italian bakery. The judge authorized us to put microphones in. For the next several months, the FBI records the conversations inside the bakery. Sparaccio. We began listening to conversations of Salvatore Sparaccio, who was claiming to be the boss of the Philadelphia Cosa Nostra family. Although Sparaccio claims to be the head of the family, the FBI wire soon makes it clear that Sparaccio is not one of the big Philadelphia Mafia bosses. He is little more than an employee, but the FBI doesn't know who he's working for. 